Good morning, evening, afternoon, so wherever you are in the world, and we're back with another episode of Author's Purpose, where we ask authors, where we ask authors, what's the purpose of their book? And today we have Nicholas, the author of Parky. So tell us about yourself. <laughs> well, um, I'm awful at describing myself, but I'm a philosopher and a grad student at the moment. And I'm stuck in quarantine like everybody else. Everybody. That's pretty much it. So, why did you want to come on the podcast today? Um, I really just liked the way that you approached me. And um, it got me curious. I never did a podcast before. And it isn't really something that I got to do a lot, you know, talking to um people that have read and have are either fans or people who just read the book i don't really get in touch with a lot of a lot of them so that was mm-hmm. i think that's the main reason and it's something new i never did it so i always like trying something new that's a good reason <laughs> <laughs> so i want to know what's your main inspiration for Harvey? Well, um, in terms of inspiration, I don't know. It's basically because the the book is this weird blend of fact and fiction. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know exactly what inspired me to do it. I think um, I I have to look back at where I was when I started writing it last year. And it was just everything in my life was kind of ending you know i was finishing college i was finishing it was my second degree my second bachelor's and i was just about to start grad school in a while and so i had this you know relationships that were ending and others that were beginning it was just a weird time where there was a lot of good stuff happening and a lot of bad stuff happening and um i kind of managed it well enough (laughs) you know and i don't know i I kind of started having the idea of of writing it first because i wanted to have i i do write usually um within academia so but it's a kind it's a different kind of writing and I was, I don't know, writing two or three um, articles about um, philosophers and and the history of philosophy and one about social politics and, you know, completely different than Heartbeat. And I started getting this idea because I was supposedly dealing um, so well with everything that was going on in my life. um, I kind of just had this light bulb moment when I thought, well, this never happened before. I was never in a place where good stuff and bad stuff was happening and I was being able to cope with it the way that I was. So that sort of made me want to write about it because it was the first time that I actually felt like I had um the upper hand in the whole mental health thing and so that's then i got the idea this very basic idea of a book and i just sat down and wrote two chapters and the last one which which ended up you know being published and i thought that would be it really i thought that after i was done with the second chapter i wasn't gonna follow through or i don't know i'd get bored or something like that but i didn't you know the next day i woke up and i had the third chapter perfectly outlined in my head and all the days that followed and i finished the book incredibly fast Mm -hmm. it was kind of nice i really enjoyed the book so i'm glad you finished it yeah and i am too (laughs) <laughs> so can you go into detail about the specific process of making 
heartbeat, like your outline, how did you outline, how much time do you spend writing, editing? Well, I, I write, basically, I, I have this thing that I cannot, when I start writing something, when I start, be it an article or a chapter of a book, if I started it, I cannot for the life of me stop in the middle and pick it up later. So I always have to finish it. If I start writing a chapter, I do it, and I only stop whenever that chapter feels like it's finished to me, even though it's a draft and it doesn't matter. So basically, when I am on writing, mo uh, writing mode, I always just write a chapter or two a day that usually takes two hours, some sometimes a little more, mm -hmm. and the next day I do the same thing. But with Heartbeat, it was very particular because I did every day I would write from two to three chapters, and so that meant five hours of writing a day, mm -hmm. which is something that I'm doing now, but basically because I can't do anything else. Nobody can. You know, I don't have to do anything else. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, it's really good for us writers because we get to write more. But at the same exactly. time, it's, it's kind of terrible. Exactly. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm having that because I keep, I do write, I am writing a lot more, but I do have, as I said, I am in grad school. So I have mm -hmm. this decision that I <laughs> make every single day, which mm -hmm. is, do I focus on my dissertation or do I focus on the three books that I'm writing? And I should be the kind of person that is able to focus on the dissertation more than <laughs> the three books, because that's very, I, I have a deadline for that. But I end up just writing the books that I am writing because I want to finish. Let's talk about, so I want to know some difficulties that you faced while writing Heartbeat, and how did you overcome them? Well, um, the biggest difficulty I've had with Heartbeat was, and, and it is something that I, all, that I have with every single book that I am writing right now, it's a matter of distance. I, I have a problem with um, distancing myself from what I'm writing. So with Heartbeat, it's, that was completely impossible to do. I tried to do that, but I couldn't. I had this, um, I don't know, by chapter five or so, I actually took a break. I wanted to stop writing it because it was getting a little bit too real for me. And in terms of, it was just me, it started to feel like it was just me telling my story and, and exposing myself in a way that I've never done and, and talking about stuff that I've never even talked about, my own therapist, but I was talking about it with Dr. Foster. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the distance, maintaining that distance was something that was very difficult. And in the end, I just realized that it's the way I write. I, I, I can't do it in any other way. So I, I had to embrace it and hope that it was enough. And that's mm -hmm. basically what I did. And I don't know if it worked or it yeah. didn't, but it's the only way that I can produce, the only way that I can actually mm -hmm. um, write and start and finish something. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, but it totally. is very weird. <laughs> kind of. I, I don't think it's weird because I'm not totally agree on you with that. Because when I write, I have to have an emotional bond with that character. Mm -hmm. And when I and I get so attached to them that it, it kind of hurts to write certain chapters and then go through difficulties because mm -hmm. I kind of feel that pain that they feel. And mm -hmm. I have the same problem with like not being able to distance myself from work because to me these characters are not characters exactly. they're, they're real people and yeah. when you when you mention it like, I understand that like when you when you make yourself like 
connect with your work, I really felt it. Like I felt that you put a lot of effort, time, and energy into this. Yeah, that, that that's something that I got a lot. You know, a lot of people say that, and and it, it's a lovely thing to have someone say that to you. But um, Harvey has this. It's different from anything else that I'll ever get to to write because it really is. Um, there's just one character in the entire book that isn't based on somebody that I know or have known. So it's, um, I, I, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of feel like I, I've lost the control of the distance when it came, when it comes to heartbeat, because, um, it really ended up being way more, um, true than initially mm -hmm. intended. So it's like, 80% my life and 30 and 20% fiction. But I'm okay with that. It's something I'm, I just don't know. Um, it was just difficult to, to do that and to, to have people know so much. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't remember the exact term, but it's called mirroring so like things that i have gone through in my life i subconsciously add into my novels mm -hmm. and struggles like with coming out and things like that i, I add them to my novels as part of my characters has to face as like a way to i don't know i just do it subconsciously it's not even the conscious most of the times and sometimes when i reread my old words i'm like oh my god i expose myself with this and that because exactly. I'm, I'm literally telling like they're showing the audience what the character is going through. I'm showing what I have gone through. Exactly, and there's and it's kind of terrifying because, mm -hmm. at least for me, when I was writing it, I at one point I just went with it, you know, because I never mm -hmm. thought the book was going to get any sort of um, attention from anyone, mm -hmm. and and I always thought the book was going to just disappear in the corners of the internet, mm -hmm. and so I just went with it, but looking back and sometimes I, I see a comment or, or someone commenting and I go and I try to answer because I, I do try to talk to everyone and I agree what they and, and the, the section that they highlighted and it's something that is not even fiction or not even a lack of distance it's just me telling something that really actually happened and it's so terrifying sometimes to know that you know a hundred thousand people <laughs> have had access to that yeah. which is so unbelievable so what is what is some advice that you would give to your past writing self in starting heartbeat oh <clears throat> let's see I um I don't know I think just the, the idea of, of giving advice to my pet self is something that I, I really try not to <laughs> dwell on because sometimes, I, depending on how I am, I would like to tell him tons of things and depending if I'm having a bad day, if I'm having a good day, I can settle for like a simple be a little more open or less afraid or just i don't know um don't you're more normal than you think you are and whatever it is in your head it does make sense to a lot of people and does make sense whenever you are able to put it into words and twist it in a way that that the people can actually hear you mm -hmm. so i think there is a question of bravery i think that mm -hmm. i would try and and remind him and also the whole it gets it gets better thing that's mm -hmm. something that i would have loved to have heard when i was younger next question but i want to know how do you deal with the pressure of writing novels like I don't, I don't really have that 
because I'm not um, under contract. I don't have mm-hmm. um, deadlines. I don't have um, nobody's expecting my next work. You know, I have like <laughs> probably like five fans and people who I can. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I really, I, at least I think so. I, you know, there's like five people who are really excited for mm-hmm. something new and um so that's cool and i love that and the only thing that i'm trying to do is not publish weekly i'm gonna finish all the books that i'm writing and i'm just gonna throw it out there mm-hmm. in full and have people hopefully enjoy it you know the, those five people <laughs> <laughs> but but in terms of pressure i don't really i don't feel it i don't have mm-hmm. I, I really don't think it's something that I take into account. Mm-hmm. So, um, what are you currently reading? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm I'm reading a lot. I always read a lot, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm it, it's sort of weird because I'm trying to read stuff that takes my mind off of everything that's going on and I'm trying to read stuff that's different from what I'm writing and also I have to write I have to read a lot because of my research so basically a lot of philosophers and a lot of um, theories about my, my thesis you know which involves um, physics and involves um, theory of multiverse and, and things like that because I am a little bit obsessed with infinity so um, I'm reading there's always uh, the wall on my nightstand I have also a book by a Brazilian um, philosopher who wrote a book which is very <laughs> very good in times like these it's called how to talk to a fascist Mm-hmm. And it's very nice, but um, I'm I was trying to get new books, um, but no, I'm just the, I have been working on. Um, I always say that I'm working on it, but I'm, I have been reading um, one particular book that's called "The Two Sources of Morality and Religion." by the philosopher who I absolutely admire called called Anhe Bergson and he was a Nobel Peace Prize no Nobel Literary Prize winner and he's part of my research so I'm, I'm reading him back but then he had the best way of writing um, what was the what was the first book you ever read mm. People never believe me when I say this, okay? So, heartbeat. Oh. <laughs> you sure? I swear to God. <laughs> I do. It's so... Because, like, I had to build up that. Like, I started when I was very young. So, it used to be this little childish story, so right? And for mm-hmm. you, like, an amazing novel, like, heartbeat. First time. It's just weird. First time. Incredible. And it will never happen again because I wrote it and it took me four months, a little more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was my first book ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the last question of the general question for you. Don't try to some more personal questions, but. Um... Okay. Okay, so what advice would you give some younger aspiring authors? Um, and this is kind of like what had you give publishing section of the universe? Well, um, first of all, I really don't think I should be <laughs> in a position <laughs> to give advice. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I have to, um, I would basically just tell them what I always think people should say. Um, and that, that is right, you know, if you think that you have a story that you're passionate about, if you have um, the passion for stories and you think that you can do that, that you can um, come up with um, a tale of whatever, you know, just write, sit down, 
write it down and don't really focus on, don't try to make it something that will be successful um, because all of that just, it, it will come if it has to and it doesn't matter in the end. The, the fact is, you know, if you want to, if you love writing, if you think that there is a, a story that's worth telling, you should just do it no matter what people tell you and never ever believe those people who will criticize you and say you, know, you should stop doing that never believe that if you like writing just do it so now to the more personal questions i just call them personal questions but they're kind of just questions okay <laughs> that's okay <laughs> i don't mind so obviously, I mean, I wrote a whole book about me. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really done. that's okay for me. By me. Go ahead. So, who authors hate this question, but I'm just gonna ask it. Who's your mm. favorite and least favorite character in your novel? Why? Mm. Um, my favorite character is Ethan. Mm -hmm. Um. My least favorite character, I don't think I have one. Yeah, and I know said that. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> basically because I know everybody that I've written about. Mm -hmm. And and I don't hate any of them. Um, I have different kinds of relationship with, or, 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 mm -hmm. relationships with them, but I love each and every one of them. Even Lucy, I, I love her. <laughs> um, Ethan is just... He is the one, the single, the, I don't know, the, the best character that I have in that book. And it is, oddly enough, the only one that's fictional. Mm -hmm. and, but I just love writing him. Mm -hmm. My favorite character in the novel is, hmm. oddly enough, Dr. Foster. <laughs> ah, really? Yes. <laughs> I oh. love all of them. Just don't be wrong, but oh, she's okay. quirky and I don't know, amazing. She's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I take and she's note. based on my therapist. Mm -hmm. I even I didn't even try to hide that because I named her. <laughs> her first name is exactly the same name as my therapist. She's called also called Alicia, mm -hmm. and um, but I just love it. I love I love her too. But Ethan, to me, is, is the best one. Mm -hmm. Take notes. So I'm going to share some couple mm -hmm. things that I say about her. So when the, uh, the reason why I really like her is mm -hmm. because she, I, first, I say she's my spirit animal. So <laughs> <laughs> she really knows how to approach the character in a way that's mm -hmm. not too threatening, but just threatening enough to give himself to open up about, about themselves. And exactly. I really like that and she really does seem like a genuine, genuine um therapist she doesn't seem like a made-up therapist that doesn't know what she's talking about she actually seems like a, a real person yeah and human mm -hmm. I, I, I i tried at least to to make her very human with flaws of her own and and you know people really hate the fact that um she lets thomas smoke during section mm -hmm. sessions and there there's a lot that people don't like about her but um i i like her because she's to me she's full of contradictions and and the mm -hmm. fact that she has such a bad relationship with her family and can still be the kind of person that brings someone out of the very depths of darkness it's mm -hmm. to me awesome if you had a chance to write something in Heartbeat, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot that I wrote that never made it to the final um, manuscript, the published part. Um, there's, um, I, I wrote, there's a lot more about the story that I left out. And I think that if I were to rewrite it, um, I would have paid a little more attention to the parents um, wow. because 
Yeah. I left my idea when I wrote it was to let the reader just figure it out. Why was it that they were always going to the lake? And, and you know, uh, I kept dropping hints. And I don't think that people actually got that. I think I do, I, I do think I failed um, in showing just how absent and um, screwed up <laughs> they were. But if I ever do write something more in that, in, in I don't know, the, the universe? With it, yeah, the universe of, of Heartbeat, if I do write something more, I will no doubt pay more attention to them because I think people deserve to know why was it, why is it that, you know, Noah and Thomas was, were always alone. Mm. This is the reason why these next couple questions are really deep. So I'm mm. just embracing you. Okay. So I want to know what's the meaning or theme of heartbeat and why did you decide upon this thing? Um, I thought when I was writing it, when I decided to write it, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought that, first of all, I wanted to. I thought that I was ready to approach and to remember and to go into detail about a lot of things. Um, but I also wanted to write something that I didn't have when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, something that um, I, I never got to read a book that I saw myself in. I never got to read a book that the character um, suffered and struggled with depression, and he just talked about it the way that I felt. Um, and I certainly never read a book about um, a love story that I ever experienced, um, or that I had didn't have to change in my head the gender of the person um, that I was writing, that I was reading about. But mostly, I think Harvey came from two things. First, the idea that I was um, finally ready to tell some of my story and to have that story heard. Um, so, I want to know... What is the thing slash meaning of heartbeat, and why did you decide to this thing? Um, okay, so I think basically um, you have to take into account where I was um, in my life when I decided to write this, and I mentioned a little, a little bit that I was at a point where there was a lot of endings and beginnings and but I, the, everything was ending and the beginnings weren't really happening yet. So I was in kind of a limbo. And during that time, which was a couple of months, I felt like, um, well, two things basically. I felt like I wanted, I was finally ready to talk about the things that I talk about in the book. And I thought that I could handle it something that I later found wasn't exactly the, the case, but I was somewhat ready to go into them. And so I wanted, you know, first thing, I wanted the story heard and understood and, and just um, to actually finally uh, try and, and get rid of it in the sense of letting it be somewhere other than my head and my Mm -hmm. my heart whatever um, and also I I never got to have I never got to read a book when I was 17 I never got to read something that I saw myself in um, it, first of all because there's very little <laughs> literature about um, anybody who's a bi um, yes, and also <laughs> and also, you know, when it comes to 
discussing mental health and, and, and books that discuss mental health for um, young adults. I think it, a lot of the times, you know, people just talk down to them. Um, mm -hmm. People, they, they kind of, it, it ends up feeling like it's a bit fake, but not, you know, deliberately maybe. It's just that Whenever, at least I, I feel this way because whenever I, I read something that someone is talking about depression, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a book uh, for young adults. It can be <clears throat> any kind of genre. <coughs> Sorry, um, you can immediately tell when someone who's talking about depression and mental health. You can immediately tell when they know what they're talking about and when they're yeah. just researching what they're talking about and most of the books that are out there i feel um do that you know they they do a lot of research and they assume a lot of things about people dealing with mental health and they talk down to those people and they i, I at least never saw myself represented and and I just thought it would be nice to to write and and something that maybe would be a bit more um just another part of of another side of of having to deal with mental health issue. Well, yeah, I keep saying this, but it's so true. But you really did a really good job. But I felt that it was. That you actually been through these things, and I haven't even met you. I just read the story because yeah. it, he, like I said, I go through this book, and also by sex and so I have to play on those both minorities because people assume things about my depression that sometimes it's true, but that's not normally true, and you really yeah. can have that good feel of when somebody is actually yeah. experienced that and actually went exactly. Through it. Because I don't know what it is, but it's different from when they research it. Exactly. No, it's, it's completely different. You can spot it, you know, in, in with one sentence, you can already say, you can already tell. Well, he's just saying what I, what he thinks or she thinks I want to hear, mm -hmm. and 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 that's what always bothered me. And with um, sexual <clears throat> literature, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is just me, but they always, not always, a lot, some people think they write, but when it's like someone that's not have gone through like the bisexual struggle, they assume that mm -hmm. we're half heterosexual or half homosexual, that we're not a complete yeah. picture, like we're not neither, we're bi. Or, or that we don't exist, you know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <That's beyond. laughs> that's that we don't Come exist. On. Yep, they are gone. Because <laughs> which, which bisexual person never heard? Yeah. Anyone saying, "Well, you just don't mm -hmm. really want to come to terms with whatever side yeah, you, are. you actually mm -hmm. like," you know. I went through that when I was actually like coming out and opening out at school. Um, mm -hmm. The people that were gay, yeah, my school was very positive with homosexuals and lesbians, but not really mm -hmm. anybody else. Not mm -hmm. just those two. And when I first came out. Is the heterosexuals of my school, they would call me gay, or they would push yeah. me toward that route, while the homosexuals in my school would call me straight and push me toward that route. Yeah. So it was just yeah. like, mm. We're like these mythical creatures who yes. barely Are you exist. a corn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or big I'm going to be big <laughs> Um. So... We, ah, we got into these questions earlier than expected. Because <laughs> these were literally some of the questions I was going to ask. Okay. Do, do events slash emotions in your life mirror your character's emotions slash events? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there um, some more than others. Mm -hmm. I have um, there there have there are a couple that I really protected, you know, airports. I really pr protected them. Um, Noah is one of them. 
Um, but his personality is exactly the personality of my sibling. Um, Marcy is someone who I absolutely love writing about as well. She complicated this, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, and she, to me, is just so complex and so awesome. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, there are conversations that I've had. There are, especially, no, Thomas is everybody figured it's me, but um, he's a better version of me <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, uh, he is a, a character. Um, he's just, you know, much braver and better. But, oh, um, yeah. no, well. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the the book has it, it does contain a lot of, of actual conversations that I've had, of actual uh, accounts, actual things that ha have happened, and especially pretty much everything dealing in those moments when Thomas is when when the reader is given a glimpse of Thomas's mind and his thought process and how he feels things and, and, and works it out, that is yeah. basically reality, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're up for it, could you describe the personal experiences with dealing with mm -hmm. coming out? Mm -hmm. My experience with that is a bit different than most. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I, I, I have had... Um, I can't really deny the fact my whole existence my whole existence has been quite privileged so mm -hmm. I, I I I haven't really gone to the coming out thing with people um because it was just natural to me I I've never felt like um and and there are different reasons for that um, first of all, I didn't have to do it with my parents because we barely have a relation, but the people that do, that did have a relationship with me, the people that I have, um, that I had to, at some point, you know, talk it up, um, they, my siblings, and who, you know, in the book, when Thomas is talking to Noah about the fact that you know, mm -hmm. a guy would just let go of it. Um, kind of like that, you know, completely mm -hmm. natural, completely just well, okay, the dude is here, that's yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I it, it's been in, in that regard, I did, did have this privilege mm -hmm. of not having to, um to do the whole coming out thing. The thing that, and that for me is a personality trait more than anything. Um, I've always, ever since I was very young, I've been a um, very clear idea of, of, I don't know how, because I am extremely cynical and pessimistic, but I've mm -hmm. had this very clear notion of um, love and that was like, or how it was supposed to be like, and never in my mind, it, it never occurred to me that that was gendered, that it should be gendered, or that it should be of anybody's business other than my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, this whole um, I've always known, even when I was a kid, you know, I, I, I never really had a problem with being attracted to someone of the same gender. I never had a problem of, of accepting myself. And like that. Having said that, um, I think most people dealt a very, very different hand. No, they they have very different experiences, and there is one that really bothers me, and and it, it's something that we all share. It doesn't matter if you've had like I just told you, you know, mm -hmm. extremely privileged way of of 
working it out or if you had to do the traditional coming out thing at your pace and time. There's one thing that is a constant that everybody in, in the community, even those who deny the community, as you said, <laughs> everybody goes through. And it's something that, that bothers the fuck. Sorry again. but And that is the fact that if, if you think about it, like really think about it, mm-hmm. everybody who is a part of the community, even whether they like it or not, they have this one moment. And it can happen when you're four. It can happen when you're nine. Mm-hmm. To me, it happened when I was. It can happen when you're 29. It can happen mm-hmm. when you're... It doesn't matter. But everybody has this one moment that I'm going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Where you look at yourself alone for some and you just think, well, if I tell this bird, my parents, um, and I don't know, if I tell my um, will she love me? Uh, so, or if she, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be your mother. It can be it anybody. Be anybody but, yes. um, you have that. At some mm-hmm. point in your life, you have that doubt, you have that question that comes up. Um, will someone, upon hearing who I am, mm-hmm. stop caring about me? And I think that it's something, it's something that is so cruel in, in a way that, that nobody, you know, gender or no other person other than the people in the community will ever understand what that feels like. Mm-hmm. And, and so that bothers me. And I think I find and I don't know how to change it. I don't know if it will. Um, I just try and be there for the people that are going through. Uh, but yeah, that really is one thing that everybody shared. Absolutely perverse and cruel. Um, I would like to take on that because it's so true. Um, myself. I have friends that have said that. Mm. Yeah, I really think. I'm sorry. That that is especially <clears throat> true for everybody in the community, and I don't feel like it's tied to any. Like I don't feel like it's tied to any one sexuality. No, it, it encompasses all, them all. It encompasses yeah. anybody that is different because it is dangerous to be yeah. different, mm-hmm. and. If you are, it doesn't matter how you are, um, and and you have that moment in your life. It's really worse when, in my case, at nine years old, you go and you think that, well, if I do this or if I say this out loud, people will look at me different. People yeah. will stop mm-hmm. caring about me. And it's one thing to think that when you're nine and can't do anything about it, and it's quite another. To, th- to think that when you're, I don't know, 18 or 20 and you can move out, do something. Mm-hmm. But it still hurts. It just, it's a formative experience that is something that nobody should ever, ever, ever go through. In yes. mm-hmm. What are your views on LGBTQ plus rights and the way society views us? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Yeah. Well, I I try to do my bit. I try to fight the way that I can. I try to be there for everybody that needs. Um, I would love to be able to not be afraid of showing <laughs> anything in public. Without it depends on where you're, and it depends on the kind of city that you live. If I live in a very big city, the third biggest city in the Americas, mm-hmm. it's it, it's different from somebody who lives a small 
pound. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how to answer what it is that I, how it is, I think society views it. I think it's a bit twofold, you know. On one hand, they don't want to view it. Mm -hmm. On the other, they simply um, wanted to want us to go away mm -hmm. and, and won't, won't accept. Uh, but it's obviously I'm saying something that I'm generalizing it's not about it. But um, there is a very large poor society that just would, really would love us to not be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that bothers me a little. And, um, and I don't know. I think it's different. It's, um, I, I come from and I was raised with people who were... You know, I've always had, had friends who experimented very early on. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, the group of people that I've been with and, and been around from the get go, you know, it's always, um, everybody was very open minded. I never really had that. that. But you turn mm -hmm. on the news, you always, um, hey, crap. And things like that, and, and people don't really. Um, uh, it's something that I'm so sick of um, mm -hmm. having to, you know, do the uh, watch somebody uh, was attacked for holding some, you know, mm -hmm. or, or for kissing, ocean mm -hmm. in public, and uh, affection, and and that's the sort of thing that. I lived in Canada for a while, and I remember I I thought it was like Toronto, and I, this is where I'm supposed to be because I, um, I was living in right around Church Street, which is you know LGBTQIA plus area, and you, you could walk around holding someone's hand, and it's fine, mm -hmm. um, but you always get the look you always get um, the stare <laughs> the stare you, you get that and I don't mm -hmm. care it's not something that bothers me today because I, to me I'm like fuck it but mm -hmm. um, it's something that I don't think people should experience and I hate mm -hmm. the fact that we, we experience that I hate the fact that anybody does to me, it's the same thing as, as I don't. Know, I hate the fact that there are people who want to delete mm -hmm. someone else's existence because it's different from their own. Mm -hmm. And everything that, that I, everything that I believe, centers around the fact that diversity is key, and it's mm -hmm. our strength, and it's where it's the way to go you know um but i wish things were different I, it is getting better mm -hmm. but at the same time it's mm -hmm. not i think the progress is extremely and, and i don't know i mean mm -hmm. it's just disheartening sometimes so i want to know what's your favorite chapter and why okay um I think Bloom is one of, I have two favorites uh, for a couple of reasons. I think is a turning point on the book, uh, and it was a turning point um, in real life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like it, I actually love that chapter because I think it, when you see in the story um, it's completely important, and you see how who Ethan is. You mm -hmm. see why he does what he does. You see, you get to see the effects that he had on Thomas, and vice versa. You get, you get to, to understand Thomas a little better, but you get to really know how they work together and and what makes them them. And I think that that's very. Uh, I don't know. It's something that I absolutely love because it's a, all 
the whole chapter is all about connection, and it's and it it sort of um, it picks apart their connection at the same time when you see it blooming, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's my third chapter, and the second isn't a chapter; it's the epilogue um, because when I when I finished the book, when I finished the chapter called Heartbeats, the last chapter, mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to be like that because I wanted the last words of the first chapter to be directly connected to the last words of the book, but with a different meaning. Because the first chapter you have, it ends with Thomas saying, I'll wait in a very dark, um, very <laughs> sad way yes. um, and the last chapter ends with him saying I could win which mm -hmm. is hope and full of um, possibility yes. and I love that and and I wanted to end it just like that and have nothing else but for some reason it didn't feel like it was done it didn't feel like it was finished mm -hmm. so I let it sit for a couple of days and one night, middle of the night, I woke up and I said, I have to do this right <laughs> because I may never write a book again. <laughs> um, and I wrote the epilogue, which is also my favorite because for different reasons, because it, it's them finally at the, the lake house. And I think it's a very healing. Um, full circle sort of moment Thomas and it's and it's a, a glimpse of their life after the, the whole thing after the fight after all the drama that, that happened it, it just you you get to see a little bit on the few, uh, further um, in time and right at the end you get to hear Thomas talk about them and you you can just you know figure out for yourself if he's talking about um, something that's happened a year ago two years ago it doesn't matter it's but they're together and i like that the, the epilogue and the last oh. chapters and oh in, I don't remember if it's chapter 9, I have a star on both of these. Mm. Or chapter 9 was uh, stay. stay. It was Stay. Mm -hmm. Oh. But it's, <laughs> it's chapter. It's, it's chapter nine. 9. And it's where we finally get to know what happened. Actually, I think it's Liam. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm like, that's a, <laughs> when they're was, making out on the couch and. and and Ethan asks up about his car. Is that the one? I think, no, and he one tells one. him about Liam? Yeah, when we get to know about Liam, because I was like, so at first, going into the chapter, I was like, don't tell me. What the hell Liam? Yeah, like, don't <laughs> tell me Liam is about to be another love interest. I don't have to ask for this. <laughs> and then I was like, but, I, I still don't understand how many how, how so many people got confused just because <laughs> of the title of that. <laughs> I love that. And, 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 and I was reading it, I was like, come on now. You don't know me <laughs> in a way because he's my guy. And then it got revealed what really happened. And I was just like, oh, oh. I, I just could not. I, I was just sitting there like, this author that you messed up like can't <laughs> <laughs> that's I was awesome. Like, I was like, okay, it was like, you know, my fault. I was just looking at the ceiling and I was like, man, I'm and I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to keep this. This hurts. <laughs> I don't even know Leo. And this hurts. Like, <laughs> I was so emotionally distraught after reading that chapter. In the yeah, it's like, just a very sad chapter. In the epilogue, I liked it because it had that bitter sweet ending. I love those mm. sweet endings. I hate sweet mm. endings, and I hate endings where the characters die. Because I'm just like, I think all of this, and then they die at the end. So, no, I hate that. And then the sweet endings, I feel like the character didn't lose anything. They didn't have to sacrifice something to get mm. their happily ever after. 
And yeah, and they learn nothing, right? Yes. Uh, you, you just had the best. You, everything was just given to you since the life. I don't get that. So the bittersweetness, it was so. It just made me feel so happy at the same time, so sad. And then it made me mm-hmm. feel like, oh my god, this is the end of the book. <laughs> like, oh my god, I don't have any good time. I can't. No, when I wrote it, I I remember because there there are a couple of rules when you write it or when you write something like a mm-hmm. prologue. Very few people like reading prologues, mm-hmm. and epilogues have to be very short. They have to be very basically just something for the fan, you know, for mm-hmm. for the people who really love the book, because the ending of the book is officially the last chapter, mm-hmm. and. Um, I was really sort of torn in having an epilogue or not, mm-hmm. but it. And then I wrote it, and I said, in the back of my my mind, I was like, "Don't make this too long. Don't make this too strong, mm-hmm. too dark, too sad, or or happy. I don't know." But it ended up being, in my opinion, one of the stronger, or one of the strongest um, parts of the book. And I, I like it because it's, it felt, it feels real because it's no happy forever. You know, there's no, no magical thing that happened. And now Thomas has absolutely no problem. So everything's peachy. There's none of that. It's just Mm -hmm. reality. So. Love that. So, a couple more questions in the personal section. Okay. I want to know, um, what are some folks that you endure in this interest? And what are some folks that you do? Hmm. I kind of like, uh, I don't adore any. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I don't like forms like that. But um, I like the idea of enemies to lovers. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I am actually writing something that's a bit like that, but I don't like it when it's, you know, too much of it. I like mm-hmm. it when it's like, it has to be funny. If it's yeah. not funny, it, it doesn't work. I hate anything that's not like that. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely despise a couple of others. <laughs> One being the, both of them are very, very much preliminary in Wattpad. On one pet. And that is. Wait, let me guess. Let me um, guess. Let me guess. Okay, okay, guess. Is it the glorification of things that shouldn't be glorified, like suicide, depression, things like that? Yeah. Oh, I got it right. That's <laughs> one of them. That's one of them. <laughs> I don't know if I would get the other one. So that's, and, um, the bad boy trope or the bad girl trope? Oh, yeah. Innocent. <laughs> Absolutely. I. Absolutely despise anybody who, <laughs> who, has to, who tries to sell a book that's called anything remotely like the the bad boy and whatever, or yeah. I kiss the bad boy, or mm-hmm. the bad boy. I hate, absolutely loathe the the notion of the bad boy. and so... the glorification of everything they said. Absolutely hate it, and I also. The, uh, it comes, I, I think it's part of that, but I also cannot stand any book that is about a bully who is just repressed. And so he treats the other main character like shit for God knows how long, bullies him, fucks with his, with his head, and then they fall in love. Oh, and they end up together. I absolutely hate that. Any sort of, if you have it in the, in the title, Bad Boy or Bully, I'm not reading it. I really am not reading it, and I actually have very strong opinions on that. So yeah. I just absolutely hate it. That's like a common thing. The first interview that I ever did, so I'm nervous, I'm nervous now. But it's, oh. it's like, we all have a strong disdain for the bad boy trope. <laughs> And the glorification for we hate them for some reason. Yes. I don't know why there's so many yes, of yes. those on Wattpad. I don't I don't get it. It's so mm. ridiculous. Really it's like 
mm-hmm. in your face. I just hate it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't you, know. I, like, I tried it. I'm just going to give it a chance. And I just was thinking, it's like, there's a lot of these characters are one dimension. Like, what can I do? Like, exactly. can't it. And then second of all, this is not okay. It's not yeah. cute. Like, I don't understand. What's well, yeah. <laughs> it just... It, it just, uh, I, I can't even. I mean, to yeah. me, it's just like trying to find for for ages whenever you wanted to 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 watch a movie that was about i don't know two guys or two girls whatever uh, one of them always would die you know you can pick like four movies that aren't straight movies and and <laughs> they end up together and they have somewhat of a happy ending to me it's the same thing I don't watch any of those movies that, you know, someone gets sick and they die horribly. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Moving on to the next question. Mm-hmm. What is the type of writing that energizes you and what is the type of writing that exhausts you? Um, I do get something that's akin to a natural high whenever I'm right. Um, and it doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't have to be that. Whenever I am actually writing, you know, my dissertation or or anything, I there's something that happens to me, <laughs> and I absolutely live for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so whenever I am, and especially when I'm being able to, you know, get like two, three, four chapters in, under. Two hours. That's like heaven for me. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me a whole week to write some <laughs> No, well, um, but in, in the exhausting part, I don't think anything it hasn't been at least exhausting. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm having trouble with my thesis because I really picked something that I shouldn't have picked mm-hmm. as my project. But um, that is all on me. Um, I'm struggling to make sense of a couple of things. A big project, and I knew it was going to be this big. But in terms of, of, I don't think I have that, actually. I do get the euphoria and and excitement about writing whenever I sit down and write. Or it, it can be the simplest thing. It can be just a line that, Perfectly ends a chapter, mm-hmm. begins or starts a chapter. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Big, or, big or small, the high, it's almost like a hot to me. I guess I have weird ones because certain parts of writing really like, get to me a natural habit, as you say. And some mm-hmm. writing parts really um yeah. No, I love to mm-hmm. I love to write still. <laughs> so like the mm-hmm. the idea, the first initial idea, is so exciting. Mm-hmm. The, the outlining part, it's like a middle. It's like depending on a chapter, I get really bummed yeah. out or really hot. <clears throat> and then the actual writing part is the same. Like, depending on that chapter and what's happening in mm-hmm. that chapter, I feel so excited. Like the words just come to me. And then yeah. if it's like more, I don't know, harder chapter to write for whatever reason, I actually mm-hmm. have to sit down and think about the word. And then mm-hmm. the editing process <clears throat> is so blissful. Because I was just rereading and I'm like, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. I agree with everything you said except for the outlining because I don't. So. <laughs> you don't outline? No, not at all. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> I, have, I have a very simple, um, and it, it just goes through how little experience I have with this. But the only way I do write is I have to. I, I write two chapters and the ending. That's it. So, and I work from then on. Um, not really trying to get to that ending that was first written, but somehow, for some reason, I always end up getting to that ending. Hmm. I actually haven't had a writer on here yet that can't still writing. I'm totally. I am. <laughs> you you have now. Yeah. <laughs> My process is more complicated. I do a brief outlines 
Mm-hmm. Basically, the main things that's going to happen in that chapter. I write the first, the middle, and the end chapter. And then, I basically pants with the mm-hmm. basic outline to get to the oh. part. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's cool. I can't do that because to me, I always approach every chapter as having a beginning, a middle, and an end. I don't like to, to me, it has to have an end, every single chapter. Yeah. To me, it's, it's a string. To me, I, mm-hmm. string, I take the string, the string starts here, and these mm-hmm. chapters are part of this growing string until it reaches mm-hmm. the end. It's a continuous cool. flow. But I understand yeah. that way. Because your way is more, I can see me using that way because it, it's easier for me. It'd probably be easier because I get I begin with this chapter, I end with this chapter. With this chapter, I end this chapter. It's not um, Yeah, but there's continuous. there's something that can happen and if you do it like this, the way that I do it, and it's mm-hmm. absolutely terrifying. So in the back of your mind you're always freaking out the entire process because you can very well just write the perfect chapter and once you're done, you go shit. There's no nowhere to go from here. Oh yes. You can get stuck extremely, yeah. uh, very easily, and and so you have to watch for that. But it's mm-hmm. cool in a way because you're always on your feet, on your toes, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two more questions in the personal section, and want to really quit taking strange questions. So, okay. I want to know. What was the first book that ever made you cry? <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> the one that I, I... I do know that the... <laughs> okay. The first book that made me cry. Mm-hmm. It's going to sound pathetic. Sound um, here. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, it won't be pathetic. It's going to be a bit sad. I don't know. Um, I was nine years old, and it was the first book that I, the first grown-up book that I, that I read. I was ten. Nine. I was ten years old, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's Romeo and Juliet. Oh. Absolutely lost it. <laughs> it, was yeah. it was absolutely ridiculous. I lost it. I, I cried for days. <laughs> Mine was Roll of Thunder, but I cried. It's a mm-hmm. racial equality book. And, mm-hmm. spoiler, the main character gets hung at the end of the book. And, oh, oh God. We read it in school, and I, I lost it. <laughs> I started crying. <laughs> so I had to be excused to go to the bathroom because I kept crying. That was, <laughs> so that was like, that was one of the first books that I did not hate when the main character died. Because he was mm-hmm. at the point of writing where, like, it was nothing. Other than some magical fancy stuff, which is representative <laughs> contemporary, that can get him out of this position. Yeah. So that was the only logical way it, it was gonna go. And I, I mm-hmm. knew it, but I'm so used to that king happy, happily ever after. And when yeah. it actually did happen, okay, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> Last question, the personal question. So, mm. What what are the next books we can expect? Oh, um, okay. Well, I already published the first chapter of Third Wife, mm-hmm. which is um, almost done. It's gonna be shorter. It's it was my <laughs> my attempt of writing something a little less sad and a little mm-hmm. less heavy than. <laughs> Heartbeat, and I failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I am failing miserably. I have like two chapters to go, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to publish it until it's ready. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I have a book that's called "Make Me Stay." That's gonna I'm gonna publish it right after that one, and mm-hmm. then there's another one that I actually got to publish the first very bad draft of it called Lovesick and mm-hmm. I deleted it and published it and I worked on it again that one's finished actually but I don't want to 
do it just now because it's it's not where I want to fall heartbeat. But after after that, I don't really think that I'll have another book out for a while. Well, this unboxing comes out to be really good. Oh, thanks. Um, to be like, I don't have any pants. I'm just gonna pop up. Like, huh? Did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so. There he is. It's one of the five. <laughs> one of the five. <laughs> Four or five. <laughs> so, critique section. Keep in mind, these are just my opinions and what I think. Yeah. This is what I think that you could have did better and improved by. So, my own series for was... Okay. My own series for two, I had two, mm-hmm. just two, maybe, <laughs> was that I felt in the beginning chapters. It was mm-hmm. specifically chapter 16, 17, that this was, um, that he wrote this depression. was going to be cured, and then he fell in love. And then he said, mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. gave me that, and I was so happy. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> this is what I need in my life. <laughs> and that was like, that was the major concern that I had with this book. And that's mm-hmm. why I was going to fall into the group's view. But then I read it in chapters, and, it was amazing. So, oh. and then the yeah, other ser- the other critique that I had, it bothered me a little, but it wasn't as big as that one, which diminished. Um, uh-huh. was oh, I'm sorry, then I forgot her name. It was the one that was best friends with me. Marcy. Marcy. Yeah. I loved her character, and I really wanted her to be fleshed out more. Oh, <laughs> you're like one of the few people who like. I was waiting, like, I was like, come on, she, she needed another chapter. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, she shows up on the one that's her name. You mm-hmm. know, it's called Marcy, and then she's at the party. Yep. And I was like, come on, you better get so much. Yeah. I yeah. was waiting for no, that. I absolutely love her, but I, I, when I published that chapter, um, I don't remember the the number of it. I think it's, I'm not even going to try to guess, but it's when I did that, I got so much hate from people because they <laughs> absolutely hated her because she isn't, she is very difficult to like right from the back, you know, but she is extremely complex and extremely and awesome complex. yeah and, and and i get it I, I i wanted her to have um more time but mm-hmm. for that to happen i would have had to have made the book like at least four chapters long and it wouldn't have worked yes i, think. I completely understand the question. But she is awesome. I, I, I agree with both of, <laughs> of your critique. Mm-hmm. Okay. Strange questions. Hmm. Not necessarily Love strange, those. but they are not necessarily dealt to the book. <laughs> okay. But I wanted to know, what was the weirdest slash funniest comment that you ever got on the book? Hmm. I don't know. Recently, someone um, started. They, I get lost a lot on the notifications because a lot of people, mm-hmm. thankfully, are reading it. Um, but there was this one person. I think it's a guy. I don't. But there was this one person that was so excited of every single line, <laughs> and at the end, he would just he just said something about. Um, um, the author's note, I think. He said mm-hmm. something about being, you know, plot twist, you know, you're Thomas, as a joke. Mm-hmm. And right after that, he wrote something like, holy chicken. And he said, holy chicken, for some reason. Mm-hmm. And I found that just completely insane and funny. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I can't remember a specific comment that was funny or that. I can't remember that. I really can't. Mm-hmm. What so, was the other part? Sorry. Oh no, that was the, that's the question. <laughs> How many hours do you write a day? Mm-hmm. 
pre lockdown or <laughs> during lockdown? Because <laughs> those. Okay. Uh, before lockdown, I would. Um, I think five hours. That's something that I. No, no, three hours. Three hours a day. Uh, before lockdown. Now I'm up to five. On on a slow day. <laughs> on a slow day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I write quite a lot, but um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to, as I'm finishing the stuff that I'm going to finish, uh, as I said, you know, after the third book, I don't think I'm going to come anything for a while. So I just want to do that now while I can. <laughs> what do you believe is the most unethical practice in the first time? Um, unethical, I think, I have a big problem with vanity publishing which is something that hasn't really been so too common lately but i really don't don't like it um but i i don't have an agent i don't have any yeah. anything any contact so i don't you know what's your favorite underrated novel hmm. can it be uh, from what i don't know Huh. Well, I'm going to say one that I really like, and it's on my pad, mm -hmm. and it's called Summer of 1996. I don't know if you read it. It's by Enamorama, and okay. she is fantastic. Everything she writes is just gold. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's called Summer of Summer 96. Yeah, um, she also has one about poetry. She's great at poetry, and it's called Malamente. M A L A N T E. What kind of research do you do? How long do you spend researching before you write a book? Mm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I uh, as I said, you know, I write from experience, so I don't really have to research um, a lot. Um, there is one book that I may write, but I don't think I will because I really, I, I don't know. I, I There is one book that I want to write and it's a mix of two of my favorites. And, um, but of course, original work done by me that I would need to have significantly um, significant amounts of, of research mm -hmm. uh, because it would be basically about focused on mental health mm -hmm. and I can only speak from the stuff that I have you know <laughs> I can't really yes. there are there's a lot more than that I would have to research but I don't know if that's ever come to be. It's just like the sequel, you know. Everybody asks about the sequel to Heartbeat, and sometimes totally up for it. Sometimes I'm like, no, it's never gonna happen. And and I don't know. I, I really don't know how much longer I'm gonna keep on writing. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna leave Nico's links down below to his social media so you know he's watching you want him back to your room and his work and his work had ink it and heartbeat. <laughs> I had to think about it. And I'm gonna leave my links down below. Um so yeah. Yeah, that's uh make this for you. <laughs> bye. Um, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it was it was my all my pleasure. <laughs>